Welcome to another edition of Yorkshire Chris Weekly. It's been a fantastic week with lots of warm days and sunny, sunny skies. And it's meant the plants have been able to grow and I've been able to do lots of jobs in the garden. One job which I've still got yet to do is plant out all these aeoniums. So that's a job I'm going to do this evening. Coming up in today's programme. I'll be planting out the aeoniums in the garden to make a summer display. I'll be looking at a very interesting plant that likes damp conditions in the garden. I'll be seeing how the T-Rex is doing so far in spring. I'll be looking at the Princeps Hybrid Palm. I'll be taking out the arid plants from the garage. I'll be looking at a very interesting large leaved arum lily. Fantastic week of weather we've had this last week. And absolutely fantastic temperatures for April. We've had 25, 26 degrees Thursday, 22, 24 Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Cool down a bit on Sunday, but it's meant the plants have been able to get some nice sun, warmth, and I have to start growing, the palms are opening the leaves slowly, the bananas are growing, everything's really sort of stirring now, but a burst of energy. Now the sun's out, We've got the big jabea throwing out two or three leaves at the same time, just there. Got the brea march in the distance going great. We've got the yuccas here, the chemerops, and if I just pan round, We've got this Chachycarpus fortunii, which is flowering for the very first time. So those are those yellow oval shaped pods on the side of the palm. And they will open up and flower. And Chachycarpus are either male or female. So we'll be able to find out if this is a male or female for the first time when the flowers open up in a few weeks time. Right, the time has come to take out all these aeoniums from the greenhouse and get them planted outside. Now I've dug over the front garden, the area where I'm going to replant the aeoniums, the same space we were last year and as you can see this is quite dry, blocky clay soil and you probably think this is probably not the right soil for aeoniums but actually they seem to thrive in this it's on a slope so it never gets waterlogged it's full of nutrients and the aeoniums themselves don't actually produce many roots just lots of little fibrous ones and actually do really well in this soil so I've gone over this, got all the weeds out and as well as the weeds I've had to cut out some bamboo runners from that Vivax bamboo there that come all the way down to past the yucca and I'll just show you those this is all my rubbish from the front garden and you can see these are the runners here about a metre long and loads of shoots that I've had to cut off there just to keep them in check anyway these are the aeoniums so they've had a full winter in the greenhouse they don't look good at this time of year, but I'm not worried because I know it works this. Basically I just dug them up. Well, I pulled them up basically. There's no real roots on there. There's no soil on there. Some look okay. Some look less so where they've not had enough light. But overall there's some really nice ones. So they've survived. I'll put them in the ground. 
and I've not need to harden these off because the succulents and because what happens is all the old leaves die off pretty quickly and you'll get a tight rosette so in the next four to six weeks they will look particularly brilliant but then come June they'll start growing really well and they'll create lots of beautiful rosettes in the garden so it's worth sacrificing a few weeks of looking pretty rubbish so I'll plant them out now. Now I've planted out all the aeoniums all around the yuccas here in the front garden and as I said earlier they don't look good yet at this time of year having been through winter they've not really been watered but in four to six weeks time so by June these will have established the leaves will have plumped up and lots of new growth will be there and then throughout the summer and autumn they'll give a great display Aeoniums are so easy to overwinter and to grow and look really unusual in the garden so I'll show you what they'll look like in a few weeks time so the main job I've been doing this week is clearing all the beds and getting rid of all the straw and all the old foliage and twigs from last year's growth. So it doesn't look great at the moment, there's no really active life in these areas, but I've cleared all the beds around the pond and weeded those. And if we just go around, I'll just quickly show you that bed there, completely weeded that one. Already the collocages have started into growth. I've also got the Lobelia tuper, and that's already well, a, well away. There we are, there are the clumps of that perennial Lobelia with its tall red orange flowers in summer. So that survived the winter well. And if we just go down here, cleared all this bed here to where the Melianthus is over this area if we're getting close we can see that the new growth has started from ground level or just below ground level and we've got various areas got one area here one area there and then all these areas these twigs here will also grow more plants and because I've mounded soil over it where the big stems have been on the ground it's making several plants so I could actually just dig these up and spread these about in fact, I think I will do that with a couple. Another Lobelia we have is Lobelia cardinalis, and this is Queen Victoria, quite an old form. And there's very, very pillar box red flowers in summer. This is a hardy plant. It likes to be moist really, it can go as a as a pond marginal, but it's fine in the general soil as well. Cleared all this bed. Again, the colour cages are just starting to grow. I'll just show you a real nice plant just down here. So I've cleared this area, I've just cut back this formium that's over the path, and cut back this New Zealand privet as well. And this reveals this very interesting plant which is called Spotty Dotty. And when the leaves unfurl, they're this beautiful geometric shape, and they get larger and larger, so these leaves will be larger still. And they just flower with like a daisy-like leaf flower, sorry, and furry stems. And this likes shade, doesn't want to be in the sun at all, so it needs to be in shade, a part shade. It likes to be nice and moist, this is well watered, this one. So that's filling this little corner of the garden. Now this is my Tetrapanax Rex and already it's opening its very large leaves. The first leaves will be quite large but then they'll get bigger and bigger throughout early summer up to a metre across. And if a late frost gets this it will blacken the newest leaves but hopefully we won't get a late frost and it'll be able to power through and produce its huge leaves nice and quickly in May and June 
and this one now is tall so this is about two meters tall this one and it's gonna create a nice canopy in this part of the garden that palm behind is a princeps hybrid and it's a tale of two halves really because that princeps hybrid there doing fantastic no sign of spear pull same with this one here producing huge leaves but if we look on this side we have got an issue because this princeps hybrid it's got a rotten center not quite spear pull I can't pull it out quite yet but it's rotten these leaves and this particular one has done that for the last two or three years and so has this one next to it as well it just seems to be a part of this plant that does it every year, I don't know why but it's exactly the same species as the one that is just a few metres away over there but there you always look much healthier than these in a bit more open position they'll don't die, they'll just might spear pull and then they'll count and grow in in summer just put some back a little bit and it means they don't grow as large as the two over there so another job I've done this weekend is to bring out these arid plants that were in the garage and I've brought them out and I've put them in the shade because they do need hardening off it's been such a hot bright week it's really important that they don't scorch now because even though the succulents and they're from hot places they can still scorch if they're brought into bright light so we've got the cacti got a couple of aeoniums, got the aloes and the agaves and they've all come through really well this winter all in the little individual pots so I'll pot these up into large pots later in the year but for now I'll just harden them off and then bring them all together to make a nice collection at the side of the house now this plant that's waking up it's a Zantadisha and this has beautiful white spathes so very large white flowers large green leaves and these are hardy and they can grow in really wet soils so this one's actually in the soil but I've got one also actually in the pond itself it was in a pot but it floated away that spent all winter just floating so I will repot that one and I've also got a few in the pond itself so if I just turn around you can see over there there's one growing away actually submerged that's a proper pond marginal plant that has a plain green leaf grows to about six centimeters so something like that and then has flowers all summer long but I have got another type of Xantodesia quite a sought after one and this is Xantodesia hercules and the main difference between this and the general Xantodesia uh, Kroberg there Krobera, is that it's got spotted leaves you can see the markings on there it does produce white flowers so that's actually this one's starting to flower already it's been in the greenhouse last few weeks since the beast from the east it was outside but then brought it in and it's really made it start growing a bit earlier than the ones in the ground and this really needs planting out because this is a beast of a plant although it's small at the moment this will grow huge with leaves apparently up to 90 centimeters long and the plant itself can grow a metre and a half, maybe even taller. So this is a very large, if not the largest Santa D you can grow in the UK. It's a very sought after plant, so I'll be planting that next week out by the pond where it can get maximum moisture and where hopefully it'll grow into a huge plant this summer. It's nice to see it flowering already. Thanks for watching another edition of the Archbishop's Weekly. Join me next week when we're doing more in the garden.